The recording is in progress, so let's get going. This is Saturday, May 7th, in the year 2022. How did we get here so quickly? Uh, and this is a Saturday morning work session. We are going to uh, review the business for Thursday's business meeting. Let me get my screen share going so that we can look at the agenda together. And we'll uh, we'll start at the top here. Uh, since we don't have any village administration or officials, we'll roll around to, uh, uh, to Eric for a village planner update when he joins us. But I know from planning and zoning, we began reviewing the uh, first first cuts uh, of the zoning or the uh, zoning code rewrite that is underway. It is still in its very early steps, but but it has begun. Uh, also, one of our voting members of planning and zoning has resigned. Eddie Bell has resigned so that is a seat that is going to need to be replaced there are two non-voting members on planning and zoning so the first the uh, first step is to see if either of them would like to step into the voting member role and then recruiting a new non-voting member assuming that one of those two step up uh and next meeting date i don't have off the top of my head I believe we have a meeting planned for next month. Uh, so then, uh, Nikki, anything from MPCA? Oh, I need to unmute. Um, they're doing a movie night for our kickoff Memorial Weekend. Um, they're still learning all the cool things that their website's doing. <clears throat> but aside from that, um, getting their Pride event really kind of started and and you know some concrete foundation on but um they're really concentrating a lot on their events and their website right now sure cool 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 and you might Brian, yes sir uh let me just circle back just a moment planning and zoning yeah. maybe it's just uh a false perception on me or what have you but it seems like we lose a lot of people from that committee like said, like like generally a person a year drops off or so. Do we know why people just? I mean, is it just oh, this is more time, or are people like you know what this committee doesn't actually get things done. I thought I could do things, and the needle's not moving. Do we have any insight into that? I don't. Um, I mean, I know Eddie had time constraint issues. Like I know he hadn't been able to attend the last. He hadn't attended a meeting yet this year and hadn't attended because and this is when I, I joined up in planning and zoning this year so I don't have any previous perspective maybe Eric might um but that I that I don't know okay well it, if nothing else just knowing that the current person's just like boy I signed up for this and didn't realize that I couldn't make the meetings that's that's innocuous enough for me yeah yeah Thanks. I think that's I, that is the current situation. Uh, all right, Nikki, you're up for communications. Um, we just had our meeting on the 21st just to kind of talk about um, how we are assisting community with um, Diversity Week. We will have three or four different video projects. We have someone from Kenya, someone from Guatemala, um, I think a Nepali an Indian and then a member of the deaf and disabled part of the community, just kind of bringing everybody together, you know, <clears throat> showing their Minerva Park, you know, showing how their Minerva Park proud. Um, lots of different events that, you know, Jason has worked on and, and we're just trying to get the, the word out. Coffee with Council, I'm actually looking for my minutes. It's in June. I know it's, hold on a minute, one second. June 16th, um, we're gonna do our first chatting with council. It's just gonna be an introductory, you know, what I would say for each member, um, just have maybe like five minutes, introduce yourself. What are you passionate about? Where do you come from? 
what are you working on in your committee and you know that and then just open it up for a q and a after that way <clears throat> we don't have to really worry about people taking over um and and everybody has a chance to be listened to so aside from that that is all this morning good well, i don't know why it feels like it's been this the uh, nikki and brian show this morning but finance is next so finance committee as you all are aware uh, we just passed the legislation to engage in the uh, TIF revenue financing. Those efforts to uh, close on that deal are underway. Um, after that, the next big thing um, is going to be that the tax budget is due to the state in June. So we'll have a uh, finance committee meeting that we orchestrate with um, our new fiscal officer, uh, just to discuss what's in there. We'll have our three readings and then we'll have to get that off to the, oh, and there does need to be a public hearing for that. So, but I've, I've just discussed it with the, with Mr. Wilczek and laid out a plan for how we can get all that in. So we don't have to waive readings and hopefully not have to pass as an emergency. Uh, and that rolls on down to streets. Um, so I had a meeting with Tiffany, um, I think it was last Wednesday, um, and with Mike Fl Flickinger. So we talked about getting kind of, mostly the focus was um, the Jordan Road project and the sewer that's not accessible to us because it is on private property. So we kind of talked about ways in to have access to it because it is Mike's opinion that that's probably the kind of the biggest problem. Um, and then we talked about maybe doing it in stages where uh, we just focus on that, which where we think that's the biggest problem, because otherwise it's going to be a very lengthy process and we don't want to wait for too long to address this whole thing. Um, we're still working on uh, doing the flow models, which came in probably a day after. I think it was like the same afternoon that they came in um, and the flow models came in about like what size sewers we need for that area. Um, so now they're trying to figure out financing for the whole project. Um, so it's kind of like two parts. So the first part we're still kind of working on is a separate issue, try to get that done as soon as possible. Um, and then the second issue is just, just to make sure that we're doing it right. Um, so we're just gonna stage it basically at this point. So that's kind of what we're working on. Um, the other project on East Shore Court, um, pipes are slated to be delivered next week. And then they're gonna start work probably the week after that. Um, and then the streets assessment is still kind of going, they were going to start in April, but unfortunately with all the wet weather that they had to delay kind of assessing the streets, cause it's hard to do when it's raining, but it's springtime in Ohio. So that's kind of where we are. Um, so we're definitely actively working on figuring out the Jordan road situation. Um, so that's what's going on. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. All right. Uh, Rolling, rolling with the punches here. Uh, Jason Cameron is not here today for a community report. Does anybody else from that committee want to report out for community? Um, I've been working with attempting to round up a handful of food trucks from diverse, um, I guess you'd say diverse cultural uh, fair. And apparently that stuff needs to be done. Uh, quite a bit in advance. I'm not having a lot of luck, but I'm keep sending stuff out. So if I can get one or two for the 11th, um, that'd be a, a good deal. Have you have you reached out? To, I know that the mayor is the one who's been doing all the food trucks that have been coming into the village. Maybe she has some personal contacts. I have the um, same spreadsheet Barb sent me. So I've been sending them emails. Asking, you know, if they'd be available on the 11th and all that good stuff. Um, I'll keep plugging away at it. I know That's it's going to be a big point. thing regardless, but I'll keep plugging away at it. Very good. Well, since you chimed up, you can you can keep on rolling through straight for a safety committee update. Really? Thank you. <laughs> um, so safety had a meeting on Thursday, which was pretty productive. Um, we discussed the, um, I guess you'd say, background and context of the shelter house um, locations and, I guess you'd say, issues 
with its location and my mind and I believe other people's minds were put at ease um, with the ability of the police to respond to um, any future issues and that there are more than one option we can use to address them in the future. We also discuss the um, uh, those big white painted stop bars. Uh, we got an estimate for that in, I believe, yesterday. It's like four grand or something like that. Yeah, forty one hundred dollars is what I see um, on the estimate. So um, overall, those are the couple of major things we discussed. We also discussed a firework ordinance that will need to be adjusted as per the Ohio Revised Code changing this um, July 1st. So we can discuss that at some point, but we'll need to jump on that pretty pretty darn quick. Great. Thanks, David. I unfortunately did not make the Thursday meeting because it's just been a crazy week for me. It's okay. Um, when it came to the location and safety concerns of the shelter house, was the focus that putting a shelter house there would cause more problems or that that area has problems so it might not be the best place for it? Do you understand my, my, my difference of, of take on that? Yes, yes. Um, so, I don't think like, it's either, David, right? I think Chief addressed yeah. that. Yeah, it, it seems to be a, I don't want to say chicken or the egg situation, um, but there has been a population in the village that was against the basketball court from the start, against a shelter house at it. And, you know, that's, they're more than well, they're more than welcome to have that opinion. Um, and, you know, they're, you know, living by it. So that's, you know, understandable that they'd have stronger feelings than other members of the community about it. But um, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, the people who have uh, communicated with these residents more um, recently or more intently than I, more specifically than I have, but I believe the issue was the, the fear of increased um, antisocial behavior, criminal activity stemming from more I don't know, opportunity or comfort to be there. It's it's not so, a philosophy I subscribe to, but it's definitely a valid one that I can understand. So just to, I, if, I, if I may just reiterate the facts on, from that chief told us at the meeting, which everyone's welcome to listen to. <laughs> the, the item specific is that we had an uptick of significant incidents in 2020, since we were the only basketball court within a 10 mile radius. Uh, 2021, there were three incidents, juveniles after hours, when it was dark, they were moved on. Chief can go into more detail at the meeting, uh, obviously answer any other concerns or questions from council members that did not attend, uh, but he has things well in hand and are going to continue the same strategies they implemented post-2020 to bring it down to uh, a completely controlled and safe situation at this stage. Uh, he did not have any issues with the shelter going there. Uh, in fact, his opinion, which I share, is that it will actually help security since you're going to have adults uh, present. And of course, as I added in, there will be ability to add a camera cheaply to the top of that future structure. Yeah, that was kind of my thoughts on it too. I, as I said, I didn't make the meeting, so I'll use this as my chance to, to state my things on it. You know, whereas a basketball court does bring 16 through 26 year old males into an area and 16 through 20 year old males are you know the dumbest most destructive things on the planet essentially because they just are um i i don't see the shelter house drawing that crowd in i don't see anyone sitting around going like yeah what do you want to do today well i hear there's a good shelter house down in minerva park let's go sit on a picnic table i i, I don't see that bringing in i and i could understand if people are like oh do we want to put it there if it's going to be adjacent to a thing that has problems, but I just personally don't see how, you know, a shelter house draws in any kind of problem. And, and as Eric just said, almost quite the contrary, because, you know, if you're having a, your, your kid's birthday party or your whatever party down there, you're going to have a bunch of adults saying like, Hey, there's kids over here, knock it off. 
yeah, I don't think I was under is that I probably should have showed up to the meeting Thursday to, to point out, but I didn't. So that was my chance. I don't, I don't think it's it, the, the concept is just because people's against the basketball court that, that they just, if it's going to be there, if we're going to add a structure, let's just make both safe. That's it. That's the people's concerns. A couple council people is the one who recommended the camera. And I think that would really add a level of comfort and resource of uh, making the residents feel safe. Yeah, but it's not I, think, I think at this point, um, we should move forward with a shelter house with camera included as like a one deal. Um, and then another thing is like, we should define what a shelter house is. It's just like a structure with a roof, like nothing super fancy, um, you know, no bathroom or anything like this at this point, just so there's no confusion for everybody. Um, just basically to get away from the rain or the sunshine or something like that. And in the, in the past with our, uh, cause I know a lot of you, I mean, well, excuse me, Stacy and Nikki, you're new. Um, the, the closest we came to bathroom talks in the previous year when discussing this was some kind of reasonably sort of like one step over porta potties, like like a decent porta potty instead of just the little closet one. Uh, the idea being like you got an emergency use restroom, but it's not something anyone's going to want to hang out and smoke cigarettes in. Yeah. All right. I think we've we've. we've I don't talked. think we're there. Yeah. With that. All right. In. You're saying you're not comfortable with that either. Is that what you were just saying? My concern is the maintenance of that. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yep. I do think there's an expense of, of any sort of, you know, bathroom, porta potty, whatever that would need to be considered. So, but we can, we I think we are nowhere near that point in that, and this isn't the time. So we can move along. Yeah, I wouldn't even like kind of. Hey. Dwell so, on that. I'm going to put a pause on village committee reports and roll back up to. Uh, village planner, uh, Eric Fisher. Um, Eric, I did give a, a planning and zoning. So if you just want to talk about non planning and zoning stuff, uh, you, you, you we're, we're good for you. Or talk yeah. about planning and zoning stuff. I probably got it wrong. <laughs> no, sir. I didn't hear it said. I'm sure it was wonderful. Uh, we'll rehash at the meeting if necessary. So yeah. uh, it was a lot of PNZ code, I think is what we did. And I'm sure you address that. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Very good. Um, morning, all. A uh, couple things. Um, quick announcement. So obviously, a successful passage of the financing for a number of projects. Just want to give you some updates on the actual projects, so especially the major ones. Um, we have uh, finalized from our construction attorney with Frost Round Todd, some of the changes to our uh, AIA contract, which will be rebid I believe what I see in my email uh, on Wednesday, uh, that will go out for bid for a six week period for the building. Um, and then we'll have a couple pre-con meetings. Uh, well, a couple, I should say pre-bid meetings, apologize, uh, that the architects will conduct during that period with interested bidders. We expect to have, I've already actually spoken to a couple of GCs. We expect to have people be able to bid under these better um, bidding conditions, longer terms, uh, and a, a contract that will allow for a certain percentage of fluctuation in the market should it come to that, um, which was a primary issue before both of those items. So going out on Wednesday, uh, and we shall see what happens, but I'm um, cautiously optimistic. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you talk there. about that a little bit? Um, yep. In regards to that, my question is, is, do you think that we'll have more bids, not only from the favorable things, but do you think it's because the, the market has slowed down a little bit or is no. that a factor? No, no, market hasn't slowed down at all. We, we've seen prices okay. increase, uh, difficulty. It, it's more a matter that they are so busy. Number one, we, we, we had a three week period before, which was considered fairly normal uh, previous to this um, economic environment. Uh, that was not enough time for people's uh, uh, professional bidders to you know put stuff together or well, they have professional estimators within these big, uh, big construction companies. There's not enough time given that they were all slammed with requests. Um, 
so that was a the other issue with public with public bidding projects like this is that um, it is an issue where because prices are fluctuating uh, to some degree that there's you know our, our contracts generally again before this these conditions were occurring are generally designed about a uh, de designed around a concept of not to exceed. The problem is, is six months or eight months down the road, when they get to get to their materials ordered, prices may have fluctuated up 10 or 15 percent, uh, which causes a loss to the to the contractor at that point. Um, we have some proposed language in there that our, our construction attorney approved in this case that will allow for um, some mitigation of that should prices exceed a certain threshold that the village would be able to. Um, come in there and and give them some comfort so that they feel like they can bid and not lose on the job that no you know they they have to bid and make a profit and they're not here to lose money to the village or the public project so we have to we have to make sure that we account for that and we have our construction attorney Steve Withy with Frost Brown Todd feels we have now properly accounted for that within the contract those were the two major issues of why we had no bidders well why we had one crazy bid because that bidder was just trying to account for it, but he was way outside the 10% range, uh, which is why we had to, you know, rebid. So that's it in a nutshell. Part of the uh, discussion previously was that the bidding period. Bidding thought, period was too short. Yeah. So is, is six weeks, because I thought that standard used to be two months. Is that not the case? No, I mean, it, it, it depends on, you know, it depends on project, but typically the people uh, we, we're giving it right around three weeks to a month because they want to get people in their bid moving groove, right? So that we have some things going on. That was three weeks to a month is not enough time out there from our feedback that we talked to people who perhaps were interested, but didn't bid. It was a, a problem. Six right. weeks is enough time. So okay. everybody thinks it's fine. Um, so at least people we've spoken to. So we are, like I said, optimistically confident we will get uh, at least several bids and that'll be good. Um, okay, so no other questions. I will then jump into, let's see, there's that one. Um, the Our engineers firm will be, be putting together a proposal for the lakes for you folks to review. Uh, I would expect that'll take probably within sometime by June. And then um, we, he will be in with his folks to go over that with you and then uh, you can, accept that proposal if you like, and then we can do the planning for the rest of the, the year on the lakes, which would be wonderful too. Um, and then let's see, I think I forwarded over, I did, let me bring it up on the screen. I forwarded over what we call a uh, vacation of right of way request. Um, oops, I need to share. I can, I can put it up on my screen if you want. Wonderful, that'd be great. I have it. I just, you, if you put the aerial up, that'll be most yeah. helpful. Give me two shakes. Uh... Is that big enough? I don't have anything yet. You have to. You have to I think you have to cancel the current share and share the other one. No, the no. I just dragged it into my screen. You should all see it now. I have a uh, agenda. You have agenda. Oh, okay. Well then, I will do exactly that. Can you choose shapes? Yep, yep. Oh, I know what happened. Stupid technology. <laughs> Love it. There you go. Okie dokie. Um, you could close that CAD file section right there, uh, the, right in the middle. Uh, on the screen, there's a little arrow that points to the right uh, between the two uh, dialogue windows there. So one, you've got the map up and right to the right of that. Yep. Yep. Thank you, sir. Wonderful. Okay. All right. This is, and yeah, and I'm, I apologize because I also had the Franklin County map on my side to show, but that's okay. This will be sufficient. Um, you would rather share on your side. You can. I just thought it. Oh yeah, if you could. Yeah, that way I can drive and I can I can go back and forth between things. Thank you, sir. Let me just do it real fast. Okie dokie. Here we go. Okay. Hi, Mayor Hughes. Yeah, morning, Mayor. Okay. Hi. Everybody. everybody can see that. I assume this is a request from uh, the fit offs. Now, what what happens in this? case uh is 
right of way, unplatted or unutilized right away, and you should be able to see the Franklin County website. So this section here is an unplatted piece of right of way right on Minerva Lake Road, you know, basically across from the entrance to the pool, yes, to the pool. And, you know, a long time ago, when they platted this in the 50s, you know, this, there's, we have several of these in existence, you know, obviously the golf course came up here. So they put this in thinking that one day there'll be more houses here, which they were right, just didn't design out the way they had planned. So this area here is public right of way under state law. The council has the ability, uh, and this is a, a semi-common request in other councils where we've got dead right of way like this to where you can divide up the right of way um, and by law, it goes back to adjacent owners. Uh, in this case, there are three adjacent owners. We are included as we have reserve A right here, um, the Thidoff and then the neighbors over on this side. And actually there's a small sliver as I bring back up the other one, a uh, small sliver, which we'll have to account for uh, here for this neighbor. So you can see that there's this little piece here, there's this piece, and there's this longer winded piece going back to the Thidoffs. Now, the reserve, I when I went through this kind of request from them, I made sure I wanted to make sure that for future purposes, we had the ability to utilize the right of way and kind of create a path at some point that would connect to reserve B. Don't know if that'll ever happen, but again, given that we've got uh, potential money on the table to make that happen, we want to leave all options open. In this case, the current ownerships here, uh, and primarily it's the Thidoffs have been, you know, grooming and mowing and doing all kinds of things to this as it's adjacent to the property. We technically are responsible for care of any of the, anything within the right of way. So um, we're supposed to be cutting and mowing and doing that. And he has been doing that over the years. Uh, and there's a, there's a history with um, him in the village with doing it. And other, some people feel one way and some people feel another way. I'm here simply to present an objective request, uh, which is not unusual. It, it happens again where we've got dead right of way, essentially in different villages and cities across the state, um, alleys, anything like that can be vacated and part of it goes back to um, adjacent owners. So that's what's in front of you. This is a, you know, I, they wanted to put in the request. We don't have, since we don't do this every day, we don't have a formal permit system. So I asked them to go ahead and just submit what you see in front of you. We can put that up within, um, you know, as they've requested, you'll have an opportunity to review that over three readings. Um, you can vote it up or down after the third reading. Um, they, if it goes through, then they will prepare the proper, they'll pay for the surveyor to prepare the proper meets and bounds. Uh, and then it gets filed with the county. And these pieces go back as shown to each of the uh, adjacent owners. Um, that's it. I'll take any questions regarding it? And like I said, you've got uh, three, you'll have three readings to discuss and another work session to go over any concerns and questions you've got regarding this. My first question is, it was my understanding that residents on either side of these um, undeveloped right of ways that our code indicated that they were responsible for the care for the mowing and what have you. I would, I would right. argue that it's usable right away, first off. So in the, other words, it's improved right of way where they're responsible. Um, and we can, we can get that finer detail point from a technicality and a discussion with legal counsel. Mm -hmm. um, but I have not seen that enforced like that across my career. Because typically... I mean, I Typically, if we're making them in those cases, I would then go back to the same argument that if we are feel like we're enforcing that upon them, then we definitively should, if we're never going to use the right of way, right? And this is, this is the criteria that villages and cities look at it. If you're never going to use the right of way and it's in an unproductive state, you should just vacate it back to the adjacent owners. They can fully care for it. And they also, they're then by pay property taxes on it. So that's, how I would kind of put that forward. Okay. Um, well, I, I know I am reasonably certain we as a village have enforced that in the past because I'm pretty sure if you ask Councilperson Shrestha about the didn't mow the unimproved right away adjacent to her property, 
um, she would gladly remind you that the village has enforced that on others. And I would say this is a good time for us to talk to legal counsel and make sure that we're doing it correctly. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, I agree. It's not agree. me that made her do it. <laughs> oh, I know. I wasn't saying it was you. I was just saying that I, I know that this has been a thing in the past, so we should make sure that we're doing it. Um, another question I have is that um, obfuscated by those trees in that aerial view, I believe, is some sort of a... Uh, I don't know if it's a drainage ditch or if it is an actual part of the waterways. Um, part of my concern in doing this would be that the slice of slice of right away that we it looks like we would be giving up might curtail our ability to make that walking path that you mentioned because I don't know how we could if we if if it's a waterway that we can't disturb. I, I think that we we wouldn't be we might not be able to do that. So I also would like some Understood. more information on that. Valid valid point in question. What I will point out is that prior to right of way, uh, again, it's a technical item, but typically what we do is in the assessment when the meets and bounds are put forward, any easements that may be required for continuing to maintain any particular infrastructure or any particular swales or anything of that nature would be incorporated into the final document to be recorded, uh, which all parties have to agree to prior to receiving uh, property from the municipality. That solves my issue then, because I was concerned if we ever wanted to do paths in the future, that would kind of yep. stop us. So that, that allays any concern of mine. Yeah, we'll finish that. We'll finish that in part with legal counsel. He has to fully review this as well. Uh, yep. I will be out on site to reassess and I will talk to our engineer. We'll make sure that we get what's necessary in documents if council chooses to approve this. So just so everyone knows. How does it affect that part of their driveway is in it play into it? Like do the Flanagan's then have to maintain part of their driveway? Like how does that work? Well, uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that question, please? That parcel of land, like isn't the Thidoff's driveway part of it there? Well, yes, that would be. So if it goes back to them, then it's fully right now they have a very long driveway within right of way another interesting aspect of this long right of way anytime that we've got driveways in right of way <laughs> technically it's a it's a privately maintained you know driveway within the public space so actually anyone and their their brother can go and just sit there in the vehicle and they they you know can you could even <laughs> could even i guess technically block the driveway until we sign it i mean there's some uncool things that you know, from a technical standpoint, this leaves some window open for some for some shenanigans. It's better that we, you know, again, that they get this section vacated back to them. So the majority of their privately maintained driveway is outside of the apron within the public right of way. And this is the apron within the public right of way, just like everyone else's. Um, under these current conditions, there's a long stretch of it within what is right now public right of way. And again, Anytime in the village we have the opportunity to correct this, I would always argue that we should in some way correct it because we do have other people using their driveways in public, unimproved right of way, but it is right of way, not not private ground. Um, I guess my only thought on it, and I think it's been said, but, but I'll join the echo chamber. <clears throat> um, I, I, I really think whatever it was five years ago, when council turned down MI's offer to build us a path connecting Minerva Lake Road and whatever that is, it's not Black Sycamore, it's whatever it is. Green um, Line Way. Green Line Way, thank you. That when they said, no, we're not gonna do that was a huge mistake. Um, oh, I don't disagree that, with you. I don't recall, yeah. Mark, and I have to admit, I don't remember, actually, I'm kind of surprised by that. When did, that would have occurred, I guess, during my, tenure because I don't recall that specific request. I know there were other ones, but maybe I'm just not remembering it. It was the one vote I've missed in my my years on council. Oh. Um, and I it's a big regret of mine. And I can tell you that it came down to both uh both adjacent residents uh made deep and heartfelt pleas to block it. Oh I'm gonna have to go back and listen to that. I I don't know if I was there I, mean, I must have been i, I okay. don't recall if you were there or not but i know that both uh both residents on either adjacent side made deep and heartfelt pleas okay. to block it and my guess is because again i wasn't part of the final discussion because i missed that meeting uh silly vacation uh <laughs> but 
yeah, my guess is that that is why it, it didn't okay. happen. Okay. Um, which le which leans into my last concern in this is that vacating um, any of this right. Let me let me finish real quick. I'll finish oh, and let sorry. you know. Um, is it, it is my firm belief that we need to rectify that mistake and put a walking path. Okay. So that people in the new build section aren't walking a quarter of a mile down the street to come back a quarter of a mile back down the street to get to the pool. Okay. Um, we have the right of way there. Uh, you know, we're yeah, we part reserved. of the TIF. Yeah, part of the TIF money. The whole thing was let's let's enhance and improve the village experience. And as much as I can understand the two residents, like, oh, we don't know that we really want people walking a sidewalk going on that side of the thing and increase traffic. I, I get that. I understand it. But I, I look at the 200 houses that it benefits and say, you know, needs of the many, needs of the few and whatnot. Sure. Um, yeah, we I looked that, at it. So looked at giving it, it back times, as like long as we keep enough to put a walking path, Yep. I'm all good for. Yeah, we, there is some topo. We would have to kind of come across. Um, let me bring that back up here one second. Oops, where'd my thing go? Sorry, I'm still up. All right, there is some topo here. Regardless of how MI was, they would have had to develop the path in a similar way. It would have had to come because of the way this, let me put up the other one. A little bit of an older aerial, but let's see here. Because of we've got this, you know, the stream that runs kind of through here, we have to kind of come this way. And you'd have to kind of come around on this green space. And there's a little bit of topo. It's not that we haven't built, you know, or MI hasn't built pathways along topo, but you have to kind of make it a little bit of winding pathway, avoid that and kind of come up and then connect to the thing like this. So it's it's doable. You would never be able to come kind of like this because of the stream through here anyways. Um, and then I had, a way I had it drawn out is we cross somewhere right here and that way they're on this side of the stream and then they're they're here and we can work on some other pathway across the odd intersection right here. But um, the, the crossing point is right about here in this region. So, and that's roughly what I have estimated on there. We'll make sure that we go through, we'll make sure that we go through this with obviously other professionals such as the engineer just to confirm a couple of things. Uh, and I'll have the, you know, some reports back to you on that, but we, this is about the crossing point of the stream right here and then right through here. So that's how it would conceptually run. So it seems like it'd be split halfway fairly and not undo or, or you know, not unduly, I, I hate to say close to either property owner, but split more down the middle. Uh, that's typically, that's typically the way it's done because the right of way is here. So the split is typically done right you see how our property is here we're, we're an adjacent property yeah. owner too yeah they're here it gets split halfway so and that's that's how it's done once we get to here it gets weird because obviously now we have a triple property owner but we also want to maintain um opening so to be fair we then you know split at a midpoint the engineer drew that in kind of where that midpoint line as it gets split here and we keep this part of the right of way you know current uh so then we can obviously add our pathway at some future point so that's the thinking, at least. I think I've seen heads nod, and and I've heard some reasonable agreement that a path here could be a priority, right? Would it make better sense to put a pin in this request until that pathway has been built, and then we wouldn't be limiting ourselves in the where and the how, right? So well, it's it's possible. So I would say, look we'll put a first reading on we can table it by the third reading if that's the feeling of council at that moment in time we'll be able to answer certain questions during this process i.e are they already required is it fair to continue to require should they be required to maintain this even if they you know and and i would say let's get those questions answered as part of the process i'll be able to get a preliminary back from the engineer uh and then if it's council's wish by the third reading to then table it turn it down accept it you can make that decision. You know, the request has been has been yep. put forward. It's fair to the resident to put the process forward and get to that point. So 
mean, yeah, with the maintenance wise, we need to treat everybody equally. That's, <laughs> yeah. And then I would say uh, in half response to you, Brian, I'd be okay just with plans drawn up, not not a final go ahead on a project. When I know that's kind of a half go ahead anyway, but yeah, like, okay, we have plans and you know, if we wanted, if and when we do the walkway, we know where it's gonna go. We know given this land back, it's not gonna, excuse me, affect it. That's that's far enough along the project for me to, to be able to consider an approval. I hear you. All right, let's but see what we can get done. Here without, the third that, without that information, I'm going to be a no vote on this just because I don't want to then six months later find out, oops, we, we shouldn't have given up that, that yard of space because, man, those three feet are really what we needed to do what we want to do. And now we don't have it. Yeah. And there could be some other there could be some other renditions to this, right? So that's why I say it's a good time to explore exactly where our bounds are. This is as a preliminary concept is drawn up as fairly as it can to meet the requirements of the law. So, but there are other possibilities in how we handle this. Perhaps they, you know, here they get it and it goes like this, right? The line goes here to here to keep their apron in it. Maybe you need some extra stuff here. We can, we can adjust this. I think to some degree, and we'll get all those questions answered by the third reading. And if we need to table it at that point, because something's not quite done yet, or they've got to wait a few months, I think that's a, a fair thing for council to decide on. Well, how much is this going to cost us in order to get to a third reading to do all these assessments? Is my well, this doesn't, this stuff doesn't cost you really anything. They've paid for the surveyor at this point, right? As, is, as the they should. Part I will the talk right. to, I will talk to Mike, um, you know, it's it's still it's still the residents you know it's still a residential request it still goes up on a reading um council again can vote it down table it or vote for it at the third reading let us get you some answers um and if there's going to be an extreme cost you know to to do a, a preliminary plan that may not be necessary that that gets into higher cost than just having the engineer and someone you know and, and me walk out there see what's necessary draw up a very rough plan versus getting into extreme, you know, surveying costs and things like that, which will be necessary, you know, to put this into, um, into a, a buildable plan situation. And we're not, we're not there yet. I think we can answer the vast majority of these questions without full plan sets for a future path. I think we can do a conceptual and we can, you know, get questions answered and give you enough comfort to vote a way that you want to. And then this yeah. whole request, was this due to their, like the apron maintenance mostly? Cause I know they were having trouble with that. Was that like the basis of this request? No, I think, I think that's, you know, that this is a, a part of that, right? So this is, a, this is not, this is their maintenance of their private roadway anyways, right? I think that solves a gray area problem. You know, this is just more of a technical issue from my standpoint, it solves an issue of putting it fully within private property as much as possible, right? Because this is not an apron right here. This is private roadway within a public right of way. So I think that's that's an issue, right? But that's not the primary item behind the request. The, the basis of the request is they're already doing a ton of maintenance over here anyways. Um, if we are not going to use the right of way, okay, then, you know, we're not going to build a road in it. We're not going to do that. Then it's a fair request to say, hey, village or city, vacate this back to me, right? I, I'm already caring for it. You're never going to use it. Put it into what we consider a productive piece of ground, right? Um, residential, commercial, or otherwise. And so that's the basis of the request. It's a, a reasonable request that happens regularly in other municipalities that are larger than us. So to solve these kind of dead right-of-way issues. Like I said, we'll have another work session. We'll have some answers for you in a month um, before the third reading. So we can we can have a, a, a more lively discussion at that point based on what we put in front of you. I will say uh, getting our engineer and maybe even you, although nothing personal, mostly our engineer, <laughs> signing off on, a, okay, we can do this and still have room for a walkway is, is enough assurance for me that we can do it. Um, Understood. That's, that's just my personal belief. 
I don't, I don't need construction plans. I, I need an assurance like, yeah, we can do this. Because it is a good point. Like it's, it's land that we're not using. They're maintaining, they might as well have it as long as we still retain enough, enough uh, footage yep. there to, to yep. get a path and let people get to the pool more conveniently. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Copy that. I have said it better myself. Very good. Okay. Uh, that is all I have, I think, for the day. Oh, I think, David, one item that was uh, was brought up at safety committee meeting, if I may, was the need for legislation. Uh, as we discovered, my chief and myself had gone through this due to the incidents we're having with um, dogs, people not cleaning up after dogs, especially in the new area. We found in our review of the codes uh, and the police don't really have anything that they can use that's clear, unlike other municipalities. So we are going to uh, put something together um, like other municipalities to put in front of council to approve fairly quickly. Um, Excellent. Excellent. We're going to try to get it under two. We're going to try to get it two readings and an emergency a wave of readings if everybody's good with that so we can put it on the books. So. Excellent. Yeah. And Chief will be there to answer questions specific to other folks about this, and we'll get something in front of you here on Thursday. Great. Was there, Eric, did you have any other items to report on? No, sir. Unless someone's got another something specific, uh, I think we're good. All right. Then, uh, Councilperson Bruger, it's to legislation with you. Yeah, give me two seconds. I was just in the process of pulling up the agenda. Um, I will say, first off, we do have legislation that's going to be coming up uh, from some residents who want to uh, annex some of the public right of way. Uh, since we were not, oh, sorry. Um, that bought me the time I needed. Um, the main thing here is the levy. Um, which I'm looking at, we have time, so we're good. Um, I just had a whole conversation in my head. Um, we now apparently have paperwork back from Franklin County. So 2022-14 is going to be about putting the renewal levy actually on the ballot. Um, people will be happy to know as I look at it. It looks to be scheduled for the full three readings. Um, so we we got that in time to do that. And that's pretty much all I have for legislation is we're moving ahead with that. Um, we're also looking to pass finally our uh, supplemental appropriations. That's the one where, you know, there's some money for the pool party. There's the taking back of the double payment for the firefighting monies but nope not a lot going on right now okay i have some additions except for tiffany has some additions <laughs> okay supplemental appropriation might be adjusted um based on the safety meeting of wanting to do the uh stop bars i sent everybody i believe the quote for the stop bars to be painted um, so there would be legislation to approve that since it, it's $4,000. I would just like to put that in front of you guys just because. Um, <clears throat> so we would do legislation, add that before Thursday. Um, it's Paul Peterson, same person that I used two years ago, or I think it was three years ago, actually. Um, so there would be legislation with Paul Peterson and then adding that amount of money if we need to appropriate money for this project. I'm not sure, um, only because I haven't had a chance to talk to um, the finance team yet. So. If we need to add it, we may add it and you guys can decide whether or not you want to have it on there or not. Is there anybody completely opposed to doing the stop bar painting? Okay, so I'm going to have them go ahead and make sure legislation is ready to go. Um, that way we can, again, do the three readings and not pass it as an emergency. I mean, it's not an emergency, so let's get the readings going this week. And that's it. I don't have anything exciting. Um, Mayor Hughes, if funds do need to be appropriated for that, I do think it would be appropriate, no pun intended, 
uh, for it not to be added into this this supplemental appropriation. It would That's be fine. better to run a separate concurrent appropriations, uh, supplemental appropriations Perfect. ordinance. That's totally fine because we're going to have the three readings anyways. So if we're going to go three readings and not pass as an emergency. There's plenty of time to do three Perfect. readings with appropriation for it. I'm assuming they're watching that or they will watch this. So they'll they'll hear this. If not, um, I'll shoot them an email and just let them know um, to start another appropriation for the first reading. And we'll get that one started for the first reading to do the stop bars. Yep. Thank you. Oh. Uh, Council President Wolf, could you uh, let my second request in? There we go. Never mind. I just, I'm in. I just need to switch devices. Yep, you're fine. Ooh, we get the double. All right. Yeah. Anything else from uh, from legislation? You're muted, Councilperson Brueger. Mark, you were muted, so I'm, I'm going to assume you said no, and and you can give a thumbs up if that's the case. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I just, uh, now I'm on a different device. Got it. All right, then moving on. Uh, anybody have any old mis business to address this morning? Going once, going twice. All right, anybody have any new business to address this morning? <laughs> I love an expeditious meeting. Uh, then uh, I am going to uh, call for an adjournment. Everybody uh, have yourself a very wonderful day. We'll see happy you Mother's Thursday. Day to those of you who are mothers. Yeah, happy Thank Mother's you. Day for anybody uh, for whom that applies. Uh, and I guess have a good happy Mother's Day, even if you doesn't apply to you. I'm okay with you having <laughs> a good day. That's right. And, uh, yeah. All right. We'll see you all next time. Be well. Have a good Bye, guys. Good hey, everyone. <laughs> good thing I uh, switched devices to log on to my other virtual meeting for the last 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs>